let's get let's bring Adam in. Adam, uh, hello. Okay. Let's bring Adam in. Hello, you can Howdy. hear me. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yes, I can. You, you will probably have to mute the stream and just use Discord audio, otherwise there will be an echo. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I just uh, muted my laptop and everything like that. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Man, you know what? I just uh, enjoying my four day weekend. Uh, usually comes every two weeks. Uh, part of the job kind of deal. Yeah. Today we kind of got relaxing. Uh, my girlfriend's grandparents awesome. actually brought us some Olive Garden, uh, and her mom too. Ooh. Plus some snacks on the side. So I'm just pretty much uh, soaked about that. Damn, that's a Poggy's moment. Can I have your pronouns real quick? He, him. All right, there we go. All set. Let me just get this thing moved over here, and excellent. Let me adjust your audio just a tiny, tiny bit here. All okay. Right. All right. That sounds just right. All right, Adam. Thanks for coming on today. Really, really looking forward to hearing uh, you talk about your experiences and getting to to pitch some questions your way. I have a feeling there's some people in the audience here who are gonna find this a very, very useful thing. Um, again, as you know, I also grew up in an extremely right-wing family against my will. And uh, sometimes you <laughs> fall into these things um, through chance, unfortunately. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so why don't you uh, give us a little, give, give the stream a little rundown about who you are and what what you're here to talk about today absolutely uh just a side note here uh you may probably want to put a content warning just in case somebody doesn't like any uh or feel triggered or anything like that so i want to give you some due diligence on that sure uh, um, let me let me create that real quick um let me just make a, a secondary oops let me just copy this real quick and then we'll paste and then we'll put this down here and then we'll do uh Here we go. Oh boy, here we go. I've actually messed things up here. Ah, <laughs> I've goofed things up by being a fool. Uh, let me fix this. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. I, what do you I, want I me to CW? True, but... What do you want me to content warning, by the way? Uh, just general content. Uh, there may be things that I probably haven't really screened through my story that. Okay. I. I so. Uh, let me rename this real quick. Yeah, that's a perfect. That's, oh, that's really perfect. Oh no, it's I've made a terrible mistake. Hold on. Oh, oh god. I know what I need to do here. I've I've made a terrible mistake. Give me just a moment. I'm sorry. I'm boomering out. I'm bo I'm boomering. <laughs> oh man. Hold on. So, okay. Sometimes I make big mistakes on online too, in terms of just I don't know, fucking stupid shit like that. <laughs> don't worry. I've, no I've made a terrible mistake, but I can fix it very shortly. Hold on. I got this. I got this. I got this. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm almost there. I've almost got it. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's do this. Let's get the color. Uh, let's do the color is going to be red. Got the nice red. We got the background, which is going to be black. Here, I'm gonna shrink it down real quick. Gotta go. Here we go. There we go. All right. Here we go. Okay, I've fixed it. I was boomering, but I'm not anymore. Now you can't call me a boomer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, the, I'm gonna give you some general contexts uh, around my life and how I grew up. Okay. Uh, my dad, uh, back then, uh, before everything kind of turned into a very uh, slice and dice, internet pick and choose and Pokemon Go kind of sort of pick and ideology, he was mm. like a balance, like a quote unquote independent, but he was very much a GI state man. Uh, he worked uh, with the Air Force, uh, three years active. He's been all over the world, everything like that. My mom's a teacher. Uh, but I'm not going to be using their names uh, or fine. any more information other than, other than that, because uh, this is kind of scary, you know, uh, for me. For just a second. So, um, so to really start off, the, uh, kick, uh, kick this off, 
is primarily around uh let, let let's let's start off like post divorce uh I, my parents divorced around uh oh i don't know when i was 11 and mm -hmm. it there was a lot of uh abuse going on around psychological uh my father uh did once or twice uh some uh, physical abuse towards my mom once or twice as, as far as the incidents i've heard i probably won't get the entire whole picture because right it's hard trauma ma manages manages to fester within itself uh through people who are you know the primary uh targets mm -hmm. and uh it, it doesn't get released so i probably will never know until either she says something before you know like oh i got cancer and this happened I, yeah so yeah. anyways so uh I started, I started uh, getting really politicized uh, way beforehand because my first memory was 9-11. Right. My As would make sense. Very yeah. Few first, yeah. And my very few uh, first few memories, uh, it, it was actually kind of ironic if I can side uh, do a side tangent here. Uh, I remember on that day, I was in Arlington, Texas, and, uh, and I was three, so somewhere around there. And my babysitter, who was Turkish, mm -hmm. uh, an immigrant, you know, trying to make the best of the American dream or, you know, whatever dream is left for yeah. us regular folk. And uh, and I just see her crying. I, of course, when you're three years old or somewhere around that uh, timeline, you can't really understand why they're crying, what's on screen so bad. But now I understand the full capacity of it. And it's, you know, kind of dark to think about. Yeah. But skipping, forward, uh, skipping forward ahead. Uh, I started. I started getting resentment uh, against the state, and I found, you know, I, I, you know, through through one of my teachers, uh, it was the discovery of like history that I loved so much, and I started learning a lot about 20th century history because it was just so much packed into it and everything like that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I learned about this really neat thing called communism. And, you know, I got to that, like, really <laughs> edgy thing where I was a uh, Russo weeb <laughs> for a short bit. And my, you know, history teacher's like, hey, there, there's a, there, Russia's not the greatest place yeah, that you yeah. want to cheer on or be a cheer, cheerleader for. Again, really dumb, stupid st stuff. Well, and, I mean, um, in high school, people get, um, people get hooked on all kinds of things that they can latch on to create an identity. It's, it's very common. It's really, really common in yeah, high school. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that was a little bit before high school. So once I actually got to high school, I started, ha I had a lot of anger, but I had nowhere to channel it to other than, you know, Xbox raging at like Black Ops 2 and uh, j just self-defeating myself, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And, yeah. And I, I started playing with this idea of communism, you know, uh, and it wasn't the quote unquote good type of communism where it's like, we need to think rationally and, you know, have better rhetoric than the right. Mm -hmm. It was like, LOL, Mao's good, you know, that type of stuff. And, yeah. uh, you know, Stalin, you know, Stalin did nothing wrong. Of course, I, you know, I'm saying in the general, I'm not saying I actually said those things. I, had, I was a bit more smarter than the average uh tanky yeah and um, but it's the edgy type of like it's the sort of like oh i'm like uh, fuck you dad kind of like uh mentality that can be really easy to fall into when you're like when politics becomes like a, a refuge for you in in high school or something is what i'm guessing is that does that seem accurate yeah 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 that, that, that is uh perfectly accurate uh it's actually uh during high school i actually got the point my dad worked uh for a company that works for the dod and he contacted me one day uh he said adam i don't know what you're gonna do but you need to uh, delete your facebook or something like that i was like why is like because all that socialist bullshit and communist bullshit is, is going to get me in trouble with the uh dod and the company and Damn. they're going to take away my, my security clearance i'm like i and so i just hung up the phone and you know of course i had to say a lot more than just i right, but that was my general attitude yeah, yeah. um and over overall, I, I started. Uh, it, that was pretty, pretty much my high school thing. Uh, I, I was actually so notorious for it. I got a nickname, uh, which was actually became my second name, which was just communist. People referred to me as communist. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, do you hear, uh, you know that communist kid? 
it, you know, somebody was like, oh, you mean Adam? I was like, oh, I don't know his name, but I know he's just a communist. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I know him. <laughs> Do you get pigeonholed and, uh, into that identity sometimes? There were there yeah, was all I, kinds of stuff like that. I think every single school I've ever been to has had, uh, like, uh, people who, be, you know, they have something that makes them unique, and they sort of get pigeonholed into that, and that's sort of how high school is, isn't it? Yeah, it, it definitely is. Uh, then senior year happens, so this is where we get into the nitty gritty stuff here. Mm -hmm. So um, the start of this, I would say, for the first semester, uh, I re uh, a little bit more context here. The first three and a half years, I was in ROTC, and I still had this resentment of communism. So my ROTC instructors were not really fond of me having that. Yeah, I can uh, understand that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially yeah. with the, uh, uh, for for those who don't know in the audience, the the residuals of the Red Scare are still very much in full force in the state apparatus of the United States. Like absolutely, um, like uh, you you literally uh have to when you like try to come to the United States if you're trying to immigrate here, you literally have to tell like check off that you've never been a member of a revolutionary party um in another country it's ridiculous like they'll literally not let you into the country if you've ever been a part of any sort of left like strongly left-wing party in any other nation it's rather ridiculous but yeah yeah i just want to let people know so continue and and so uh you know there's also a lot of practical things along with that too we had uniform inspections and everything like that I couldn't get haircuts because my mom had to pay the bills she was a teacher in texas uh and we we're in a town called el paso texas uh and that was that's mainly my childhood home right there and mm -hmm. uh it, we there was even instances where the rotc instructors called and said hey uh we noticed that adam hasn't been cutting his hair you know he's been telling us this and this and this and it happened like more than twice mm -hmm. uh because i couldn't cut my hair of course I could shave because I, I could drive shave anytime I want because I'm pretty much used to it, you know, and everything like that. Skipping. Now we have the context now skipping towards senior year. I was still avid. Excuse me. I'm sorry. The Olive Garden's beating me to the punch here. That's okay. Um, don't worry about it. You're doing great. <laughs> uh, so let's see the, first half of the year i was very at, uh they were putting this message into our brains of what are you going to do after high school what are you going to do after high school and i was kind of resistant towards it. it's like well I, I definitely know what i want to do after high school and my plan was my plan was and i'm uh, not kidding when i say uh, say this was to be a professor at any university mm -hmm. not a two-year school or community college but any university to teach philosophy and at the time, I already uh, read uh, Friedrich uh, Nietzsche's uh, The Antichrist. I was an anti-theist, uh, uh, an atheist, and whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I met a few people, and I, uh, I joined the big club, and I met a few people. They helped me uh, ar architect some qualities of uh, my argumentation, how it's flawed, this and the other. And they were really good people, and we hung out a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, in and out school it made me feel safe and everything like that but my argumentation and uh people i was hanging around with there was at least two to uh, two to three people that were kind of like yikesy mm -hmm. and f somehow they purported that they cared about me uh a lot and um you know uh my best friend who's still my best friend like five to six years going on going uh was was not a part of it but he kind of noticed like hey man you're kind of changing in a few ways it's like how's that and he, he couldn't really put it into words but i understood him and then went on my way mm -hmm. and the second half of the year i is when the real dread like the sort of dread where you feel automatically sweating in your armpits like you your armpits are wet panic but it's yeah yep. it, it's it's absolute absolute panic sweats and panic all you know dread mm -hmm. whatever and and I, I and i figured out from hindsight it was just i need to make something of myself yeah and so i gave into more of the arguments from the two to three people it's like you know you know the whole religious thing and everything like that um and this that, and the other 
and it it turned into me becoming like a communist to you know kind of a moderate to full-blown conservative Mm. now most people would have stopped there but you know with this generation they have a knack of finding things that you know a lot of people would not find um appropriate Mm -hmm. uh like for example nazism or fascism Mm -hmm. but that was later down on the line and so when it came to at least three months before my graduation i said f it i'm joining the uh joining the army Mm -hmm. and and so now i come full circle with rotc kind of path here (laughs) and uh joined the army and uh this may be a little bit uh uh, embarrassing to say but i don't really care if your audience uh would care if i say it. i went to boot camp i shot you know every single gun in the arsenal except for mark 19 uh an at4 which is a rocket launcher or anti-armor vehicle launcher mm-hmm. uh i i've done everything but pass the pt test i i'm trained in d- to do and reload and do all those kind of things in the yeah. most very basic sense and I just didn't pass the PT test. And my dad, uh, I was getting letters from my mom, you know, at the time she was saying, your dad's cheering you on. He's been your biggest cheerleader at his work. He's like, yeah, Adam's kicking ass in army boot camp right now. Da, 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 da. That all changed after I came back home. Yeah. Uh, it, when I came back home, uh, I want, I want to see chat's reaction to this. If you had no contact from social interaction you have fifteen hundred dollars the most amount of money you ever seen it is 2017 you missed out on say three to four five months time of social interaction and in, in, internet interaction friends whatever what's the first thing that you do i want to see chat's reaction to this uh jade monkey the pt test is a physical uh physical training or physical fitness i think is what it's something along those lines but it's physical yeah well, I'm saying one answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's only, the only answer I got. Uh, I here's what I did, chat. I with fifteen hundred dollars, I got the uh, PS4, brand new, that had the Uncharted Four game in it. Bought three new, exclusively new games, and the rest of it on food, and never did anything with it. And I felt like the lowest piece of shit in my life. It is the exactly lowest. Of the low and uh i felt like i failed myself i felt my country i i felt even you know for some for some strange reason um i, I don't know i don't know how i could justify to myself but i failed my parents yeah. my mom was very open arms uh because you know she's like that and she said um it's all it's all right it's all right yeah. and that this is uh, this is where everything comes to f- uh, full fruition and my hatred is my dad calling me names and everything like that. Yeah. And he forced me at, let I'll give you an instance. He called me at 2 PM to get in on the West side of town, which took 30 minutes at best mm-hmm. across the city, drive him to multiple bars across town call me names while doing it and wasting my mom's entire uh two week supply of gas yeah and and well, call me names while doing it and uh missing the time to pick up my mom and i just said you know what F it. i'm going to uh oklahoma and i went to oklahoma and my uncle uh marine uh or i should say former marine he's not active but uh Act, uh, he was active during the time my dad was, but he had a longer active duty kind of stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, very uh, kind of like my mom, but he was able to lay down the law to me. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I know you come, uh, you're not mentally right. I'm going to let you have your time to think about what you're going to do. You're more than welcome to stay here. And I, I, to this day, I thank him and my aunt for this. Yeah. They're, they're immensely nice to me. And everything like that. Yeah, sometimes uh, when you've been like left out to dry by your family, like I mean, again, I I uh, I I think you've probably heard me talk about it myself. Like when I was kicked out from my family, like my friend who stepped in to help me there, I'll never forget that. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I've really, uh, throughout, uh, through 2017, I've kind of gone the, uh, doomer mode, uh, mm -hmm. as the zoomers say it. And, and, you know, I was listening to like, you know, I was no longer like listening to the early Beatles albums, le learning every lyric. I was now learning like some songs from the Smiths, creating a doomer playlist, just, <laughs> you know, full, just, just doing all of that. Of course, I, I had my first adult relationship and she cheated on me. So that put me more in a spiral after that. Yep. And, um, and interestingly enough, when I was dating her, um, she put me, uh, not put me, uh, she introduced me to a really strange world uh, where a person who is Christian is not necessarily always moral and just. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it sent me on a, uh, off of a weird spin, but that's just a tangent, you know, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And talking, you know, some people in Oklahoma who work here, you know, but, you know, I, I started developing hate, more hate of like, these people are fucking fakes. I'm sorry. Am I allowed to cuss? I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, and I, I, these, these people are fucking fakes, you know, back in El Paso, at least people were laying down truths, whether they cared or not about their restraint. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I, I started like, I, I, have, I really have no community here. You know, yeah. um, and so I, mean, I started that, looking that's for something, uh, You know, that's something that the right wing um, notoriously preys on. Um, that they offer, uh, they do offer community, but it comes at a great cost. Yeah. And that is what some a lot of people don't realize is that, like, I mean, whether it's a church community or like a cult, you know, like what I grew up in, where there's and and keep in mind in the cult that I grew up in, a lot. Like a lot of the people who were most involved in the church were vets, you know what I mean? Or people yeah. who had been struggling with drugs or people who's had their friends die and they were very alone and couldn't find a healthy community. And these people like reached their hands out and said, yeah, come on in, come on in and serve God yeah. in our name. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's, it's a very disturbing thing. And during this time between after I got out and uh, to that point, after I broke up with my girlfriend, I was watching a lot of right wing stuff. And I mean, a copious amount. Like I was watching Ben Shapiro, uh, yeah. which, you know, and now I see like speaking fast is not equal intelligence. Yeah. Uh, and then I spoke to, uh, not spoke, uh, I listened to uh, Steven Crowder, but I stopped listening to him because he was a dunce. Like, <laughs> he is, yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I've also, and I started going deeper and deeper down the YouTube poll, uh, and then, uh, YouTube poll of this thing. And at the same time, I had an Instagram account that was, had hundreds of followers, hundreds of followers that was increasingly and increasingly and increasingly getting right wing mm -hmm. to even to the point of like, to, to like, haha, here's like this like meme, but you know, you know, are, are you, are you sure it, you know, this is not because of the Jews kind, kind yeah, of means. Yeah, and, yeah. and yep. I've got, you know, Instagram, uh, the people who follow me there, the people I have conversations with on the internet and everything like that led me, uh, to join a specific group. Uh, and this specific group, uh, was famous for splitting off another group after Charlottesville. I didn't, I did not know that. Uh, until after the fact. So around January 2018, um, I discovered uh, that I was roaming on Instagram, posting right-wing memes, you know, putting, hey, hey, here's my little joke that normally you don't get, hey, hey, you know, yeah. all that stuff. And, 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 and they do that. Like, that is a huge part of the of what we now recognize as the online, like, pipe, the right wing pipeline is the oh it's just jokes the ironic the nose tapping the dog whistles and and i think you could probably speak to this but um 
sometimes when you get in debates with right wingers, they make a big stink about people like, oh, you're you're you turn you'll turn everything into a, a, a dog whistle. But the fact of the matter, and I think as you are now explaining, is that those dog whistles are often how you get pulled in. They are uh, an inside language that feels very inclusive and makes you feel really smart in comparison to all the sleeping sheep out there. Right. Yeah, it, it's also, you know, even more effective when you're posting dog whistles that you don't even know are dog whistles. Yep. And uh, that can happen, too. And that's yep. what and that's what exactly happened to me. And, you know, uh, the people I was talking to and. Uh, what I uh, said uh, during 2018, January, uh, I, I was scrolling on Instagram and there's this random account doesn't follow me. I don't follow him or her or whatever. Uh, and I, I looked at the profiles like, well, there's no discernible identity here. So I'll see what, you know, what they're talking about. And it was this, uh, guy, right. And, um, he said, Hey, I noticed you post a lot of, uh, fa uh, fashy stuff and everything like that. And I was like, um, uh, in this regards to, he's like, well, I know there's a, a group that you would like to join, uh, and this group would be uh, very beneficial to you. And I was like, what's the group name? Just give me the group name and I'll do my own research. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, it's Patriot, it's Patriot Front. Mm. And uh, yeah. Yep. And yeah, uh, some people already know where this is going to. Yeah. And, and around... Uh, I had a con uh, I put in a uh, bread about it. I was like, you know, me not understanding what framing is, not understanding what uh, propaganda is, uh, or at least to the extent of like, you know, propaganda. I know it's propaganda, but hey, these guys have a really good point, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't know if that makes any sense, but no, it does. Uh, I get. Uh, I don't know if it was an email or a text back or a Discord message. And this guy uh, said, hey, we got your uh, application and everything like that. And uh, uh, when are you available to talk? You know, what's your work schedule like? And I was like, well, I can talk. Like, I'm going to make up a random fucking day here on uh, Saturday. I can talk Saturday and we can do whatever we need to do. Uh, and he was like, all right, cool, cool. And so he sent me his uh, Discord name, or we kept it in DMs. Um, and he, uh, about on the day, on the dot, Saturday, we went to the meeting. He said, all right, so I'm going to explain what Patriot uh, Front is. We're a bunch of patriotic Americans mm -hmm. that feels our country, uh, I'm, I'm general, I'm paraphrasing and generalizing here that, you Absolutely. know, this, uh, that, you know, the Bush administration, the Obama administration have thrown us apart, you know, uh, into disarray and many presidents before that. And um, it's, you know, this and the other. And th what was really particularly funny about it is that I didn't get the hint that they were talking about race at all. Yeah. They, they were heavily implying and very loosely using the word patriot for whatever misnomer they had. And uh, they asked me, hey, if this is what we want you to do, take three flyers in this stash, in our Discord stash, right? Mm -hmm. Post them up, to post three in one section of town, take those three pictures, and then something else. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I did this in broad daytime uh, without a mask, which was the stupidest fucking thing from me, but you know, uh, I don't know. And, uh, of course, I never posted on any businesses, only posted on lamp posts, yeah. anything that was a public uh, identity. And um, and uh, not to interrupt you here, but I want to cut in a note. This is a common thing for fascist and other extremist groups to do. Uh, they're basically tests of faith that also bind you to the group. It's like why um, what, like a lot of like neo-Nazi groups will make their members get 
swastika tattoos is because it makes it imp it makes it very very difficult for them to ever find um companionship or acceptance elsewhere they make you go do public actions that can get you in trouble so that you rely on the group um also cults do this too a uh, little bit different in the way that cults operate yeah onboarding um but it's usually specifically designed to put you in jeopardy so that you rely on the group for protection yep yeah exactly exactly uh and so Man, I lost my train of thought. Oh, and the flyers. So um, then I posted it uh, to the head guy. And the head guy uh, said, all right, uh, that's cool and everything like that. Uh, I'm going to bring uh, somebody else to the call here real quick. I'm like, okay. And so this other guy comes on. And he says, howdy. I'm like, what, what's up? And the head guy was like, uh, we want to know if you're available uh, at some point during next month. And mm -hmm. this is still January, mind you. Yeah. And I was like, uh, maybe I would have in my schedules come week by week, but if I had my money situation, right, I should be able to do whatever. And, uh, he said, well, you know, that's fine with the whole money situation. Are you able to come in? Da, 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 da. It's like, yeah, I can definitely put in a vacation form, um, at X amount of day. Uh, X day and everything like that. Mm -hmm. He said, cool. Uh, your point of contact is a guy named Roma. I'm not kidding about that. That's the only name I got. Yeah. And I went to Tulsa about, which is in Tulsa in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. uh, not Oklahoma City. Oklahoma State, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was, you know, Roma asked me, what, what do you, where do you want to meet? This will have to be a public contact meeting. And I said, go to Applebee's at this address right here. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, I'll meet you at 5 p.m. I arrived in Tulsa. Uh, and, you know, I, I went to the uh, funny story. I went to a wrong mall once. Uh, I was trying to go to, like, some other mall in Tulsa, and it was, like, kind of upscale. I'm, you know, trying to window shop. Yeah. You know, being dreaming about getting bougie things. Yeah. And, um, and I accidentally went to another mall, where it had the only anchor store was JC Penney's. 80% of the stores are coming down. FYE was closing in about two days. The first thing I exited from the uh, JC Penney's mall was a drug deal happening. I walk further down the hall. There is two Tulsa County Sheriff cops guarding uh, what seems to be old white folks in their like Soviet uh, or Nazi or American built tanks or helicopters or whatever. I guess to commemorate something yeah. or some event or for their knickknacks and hobbies. Yeah. I'm just like, that's that, that is so strange how a crime could happen right over there. The cops are right over here. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, Hey, but that was a America's biggest gang. Uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, and I sincerely, uh, I left, left that mall, went to this other mall, bought myself a shirt, maybe bought myself some two drinks for the back up uh, back home uh, on the journey back home went to the spot right mm -hmm. and i made it discreet enough where it's not gonna it's not gonna turn your eyebrows because again i'm not dumb i i yeah. know how to c conceal something right. and this guy comes over and he he's shorter than me uh he has the fashy hairdo uh but it's floofy it's you know and it's he look, it looks like he tried to comb it over, but it just looks off. Yeah. And we sit down, and a uh, waitress comes by, and and she said, uh, "How are you guys doing today? Uh, uh, what's the occasion?" I'm like, I just said talk, this first thing that came out of my mind: business meeting. Yeah. Now, a a twenty year old guy and an eighteen year old guy. Uh, meeting for a business meeting. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I think the waitress kind of like fucking register is like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And okay. I'm not going to ask any more questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and so we had this conversation and I started asking random questions, you know, left, right, you know, typical questions, but they're not stringed in terms of a order of logical, uh, you know, progression so i asked him one question i still remember it to this day and i said well 
hey man, uh, I, I was just curious, uh, have you ever thought about serving your country or anything like that? And I think for Baden, I could say this. His pudgy self said, <clears throat> I thought about serving my country for a little while in my last two years of high school. But then I realized and came to the truth that Zal controls everything. I'm not going to die for Israel. And, wow. Uh, right off yeah. the bat there. Yeah. It, That's what you call <laughs> pitching the it, mask, pitching the mask right off the clip. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and I heard about the concept of Zog and I heard the conspiracy theories of, uh, you know, we're in the Middle East because of Israel and we're Israel's puppet and everything like that. But I didn't truly believe it. Uh, and there's some things that, you know, uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of my fair due diligence, um, I will say, uh, there was a lot of things I didn't buy into bullshit cause there was not quote, uh, there's not evidence for it. I'm like, Hey man, you gotta have some factual basis about it. Not a fact that somehow arbitrarily links to another fact. You have to have something in between there, like a bridge or something like that. And some people wouldn't even fucking listen to me then. I'm like, all right, go on your conspiracy theory then. Um, but I, I'll let chat decide and uh, whomever to decide on that fact. Mm -hmm. And um, so we continued chatting and we had an appetizer of wings. Uh, and I think, I think he was the most calm in the situation, but he was also the most dead eyed serious like a hundred percent believer in this mm -hmm. and this guy was clean cut this guy what you would not bat an eye to this guy unless you knew him personally and would walk down the street and you would not tell whatsoever and so we concluded the meeting and i you know I mean, it was getting cold outside, so I put on my NASA or uh, my NASA hoodie that I bought from the same mall, and and drove back home. Uh, got some gas on the way, whatever. And for any normal person, this would have been an oh fuck moment. Hmm. But when you have a series of events uh, that spans years before you even get to this point. It's safe to say that there's a lot of blinders that you're willing to ignore just to have people around you. Yep. And I think that is the most sufficient thing uh, that people need to understand is that people can do some really stupid, you know, arbitrary decisions or say the most stupid thing, uh, most stupid things. But unless you actually look at the backstory of that person, uh, you know, you just don't really understand the logic behind it and um at least in my case i'm not going to make a blanket statement for everybody but um then around 2018 uh february i, I would say uh, february to march i was getting i was in weekly calls and everything like that uh you know kind of trying to recruit other people uh but none of it worked uh you know, keeping my actual beliefs uh, hidden, but, you know, slightly, so, uh, sort of, um, you know, say, saying like milk toast conservative things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there is, uh, at, at some point uh, during March, I get a text from the head guy. He's like, hey, uh, is this you? And I see, and there's a picture of me. And uh, the guy uh, and he asked and i said yeah that that is me he said well one of our uh one of the people that you talked to way before the process said that you're uh hispanic are you hispanic i'm like i'm half hispanic he's like hey man you know what uh i gotta let you go uh, even though you're a good ally we gotta let you go we don't ex uh, accept anybody of your kind here i'm like all right wow. see ya and they never uh bothered me again wow. and yeah, and so uh, at that point, I, I was devastated to lose a community. Again, not the most logical reaction, but it is the most uh, 
emotional reaction from well, it. I mean, I think and, that a lot of people, I think a lot of people struggle to understand um, what it can feel like to be uh, like alienated. It's like, like uh, social alienation is pain is, can be painful, like physically painful. Um, and, and, uh, when you have been alienated by a lot of people, when you've been hurt, when you've been left with nothing, um, when somebody extends, you know, a hand out to you, you, your brain will, you know, you, your emotions are going to go towards that. And they, they, they know that that's what they build a lot of these things. I've talked about this before on my stream. You, you probably know this, but I've talked about how, um, right-wing propagandists aren't talking to whoever they're debating they're not even talking to most of the audience they're sending little hooks out into the audience to try and find the people who are vulnerable to this rhetoric people who are alone who are angry who are doomer who are blackpilled and try to pull them in just a little bit closer and that's why i believe it's important for us to be really careful about platforming for exactly what you're talking about here because when you are alone it is it can be so easy to uh, to overlook these horrible things because you're just looking for that togetherness that humans desperately need. Yeah, yeah, and uh, absolutely. And so within 2018, uh, I actually moved out uh, and got roommates uh, and was still on this fashy way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it took, uh, I got a new job at a factory around uh, October and uh you know still kind of thinking like the conservative like pull yourself by the bootstraps kind of thing you know work isn't done by the lazy man type of rhetoric which you know any amount of work is done by any man is just work that's all that's all it is and you know it doesn't matter if the person's lazy or not are you getting you know whatever mm -hmm. and i Still, uh, around 2018 December, I turned 21. I went to bars. I was uh, drinking every week. Yeah. And then I met a group of people. And these people were a mixture of uh, trans, gay, bi, you know, black, white. And, you know, I, I treated them decently because, you know, there there's always a power with uh, within, you know, if you had at least one decent parent to punch you in the gut spiritually and say, you got to be decent to people. You can't, yeah. you know, vitriol vitriolically go after people because of who, who they are. So I respected people, yeah. you know, um, and, and throughout 2018, uh, this, uh, 20, no, 2018, I'm sorry. Uh, 2019 mm -hmm. new year came around. Um, and my birthday is like a, a few weeks before, um new year's so mm -hmm. that that's why i'm kind of losing track on the time it's okay um uh so around 2019 i lost my car because i trusted a sober dude to drive my car but he didn't have a license <laughs> and anything excuse like me. that excuse me sorry bless you my bad uh should have muted <laughs> you're good and uh let's see and around the summer of 2019 every single day i was drinking i had hateful views but i wouldn't spill them out you know this and the other uh i just say in the short term i did not remember the summer of 2019 if you ask me on any day hey where were you on august the 8th of 2019 i would probably just say probably drinking uh you know i was extremely depressed you know this that, and the other uh, but this is where everything kind of changes uh around i would say between september to november of 2019 mm -hmm. and i uh i know this one chick that uh was there all the time at the bar uh but she uh and she she was kind of cute but you know she let, and she was, you know, portrayed herself like a hippie and everything like that. And she was a hippie uh, to a very, very, very loose extent. Uh, and what happened was um, 
I met her, uh, and for a few short months of time, we got really talking and everything like that. One night, I was just wasted, mm-hmm. just absolutely wasted. And I had ayahuasca at the same time uh, while being wasted. So, so <laughs> it's, it's, it was not the best combination. And, um, and so I made this stupid decision. It's like, hey, I drove her to this party. Might as well drive her back. And it, that was not a good decision, but I didn't kill anybody. And I'm not going to make an excuse in my action. That was an irresponsible, uh, irresponsible action. Um, got to her house and then basically just fill in the blanks there. Mm-hmm. And, and then for a, a few months, I noticed something was off about her and her mom mm-hmm. because I never saw her mom, at least when I was there working. Uh, I assumed that she probably worked at home. I'm not going to judge, but me and her were about to go out during my weekend and go out on a Saturday after I got off work. And um, she said, you know, Donald Trump, uh, uh, he's going to go ahead and uh, put the dollar back on the gold standard and everything like that. Uh, you know, it, I think it was like some random protest that um, I guess it was the first, I can't remember, somewhere in 2019. I uh but it, it was like the big one of the first big like uh, MAGA marches with guns at near government uh, facilities, mm-hmm. and you know, and she said, uh, "Q said uh, this that, and the other." I'm like, I think it that's in my head. I'm like, I read about Q, mm-hmm. okay, and she said. Uh, to her daughter, it's like, did you read the uh, latest Q thing? Um, and she was like, yeah. It was like, what Q thing? And she says, oh, do you know Q? It's like, I know of it. Yeah. And um, what happened was she showed me the website. I went on the website. I'm like, this is, and I saw like every comment after Q post. I'm like, this is some fucking horseshit. Yeah. Even it, you know, it, even like in hindsight, uh, hindsight, like, an idiot like me, you know, at the time could understand that this is this Q bullshit, you know, is it, fucking bullshit. And, um, I was uh, going to college at the time and I asked her, um, I, I know, I know I'm skipping ahead here, but she believed in Q and uh, everything like that. But, uh, I was in college at the time and I got out of college uh, in terms of winter break, and I was wearing a Trump hat, uh, like every fascist does, to appeal to the normies uh, and conservatives and everything like that. Yeah. There was this big dude, huge dude, uh, during this house party, and he came in. You could hear him. Uh, you can hear the ground shake two miles away. That's how big and tall he is. Ripped guy. And. Uh, not ripped. I mean, oh, like oh. redneck. Okay, I see. Like I see. redneck. Yeah. But he didn't look like a redneck. He, you probably, from afar, you probably think he'd be like a Hispanic or a, a Puerto Rican or something mm-hmm. like that. But he was just full blown white, sunburned, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And um, what happened was he came in, and I had the hat on, and, you know, I had this girl around my arm, and I. Uh, he said, oh, damn, you know, another Trump supporter. Hell yeah. And he asked me a very crucial question. He asked me the question of, what are you? And uh, there's a few things that, uh, uh, that was another thing that uh, is like, wait, why, you know, my internal thing is like, what, why are you asking me what are you? Yeah. And, and I asked him to clarify this. He's like, "What do you mean? What are you?" He's like, "Well, what, 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 you know, you know, what what are you made of? What like what race?" And it's like, "Oh, I'm half Hispanic." And he just exclaims, "Like, hell yeah!" Even Trump's doing a lot of shit for the Hispanics and everything like that. And I'm just like, "Uh huh. Okay. Now I know what environment I'm in, and yeah. I know, 
and it took a while to decode everything from that point. The next, I imagine sort of on pivotal, one hand, it kind of feels nice to be in a in a space where it's like, oh, well, I'm kind of accepted. But then there's probably that other feeling of like, well, wait a minute, I'm also being like tokenized. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and um, what happened uh, throughout uh, that time since that point uh, to uh, this other point I'm going to get to here. The girl that was in a situation ship with, we weren't dating. We were just kind of hanging out. Yeah. I, I don't even know if that's the correct term for it. Um, but we were, you know, doing quote unquote stuff. Dating or and, fling um, or something like that. Yeah. With a lot, with a lot of flings and everything like that. Uh, and I really wanted a relationship with her. And, uh, even though I knew that her beliefs were kind of crazy, I was like, you know what? I'm going to look past that and try to go for it. And, you know, I we talked about it a few times. Like, well, she, she cowered out and, you know, said whatever excuses she said to get out of dating and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she was starting to, there's, I don't know for what reason she did this. Uh, I'm, I respect people's privacy immensely. Like that's, you know, your phone is like your journal. You keep that to yourself. Yeah, you know, yeah. if, if you want it, unless you absolutely want me contractual and obligation to look f through it just to ease your mind, whatever, but I'm not going to go through your shit. And, um, she, for some reason, I noticed this one movie, oh, we were playing like a uh, generation of women or something like that. I, I, I forgot what the movie movie was called. But it was basically about a woman in her 40s who gave birth to a kid, mm -hmm. and then she was raising a kid without a father, and she got to uh, her uh, the guy's best friend or the teenager's best friend and some other uh, role model to help him grow up and everything like that. And it was a really good movie. It was produced by Netflix, mm -hmm. um, and and I just noticed she shifted her phone from normal how you normally text while you're in the bed just trying to watch something too shifting it where you can't see anything it's like okay mm. that's mysterious yeah the obvious signs and, of trying to hide something yeah yeah and i sincerely uh not sincerely i skipping forward a bit i was like all right i know this is not working now i'm not gonna you know, torture myself any, any any longer uh but you know i'm gonna leave it at, uh, at friendly terms there's a project I have to do for art interpretation class or um, something something to do with art. Uh, it, it's uh, give a quick description. You have to learn about the art uh, art that you're looking at. What kind of art is like re a realistic? Is an impressionist? Is it this? Mm -hmm. or is it that? That kind the of types and everything like that. All the technicalities of the theory of art theory. Yeah, it, and it was like a beginner class, community college kind of thing, and. Um, and we had this project, and this was a really interesting project. We had three American flag-esque art paintings. One was a fist with the American flag with the thumb piece of, in between your nail and the knuckle being white, uh, a Native American with an Impressionist uh, painting uh, hold, uh, draping an American flag over their shoulders, and then uh, the last one of the American flag iconography, but it's made by newspapers. So I had to get a, like a good sample size of people uh, to go about this. I recruited my uncle, I recruited my aunt. Um, I, I uh, recruited my mom. I, I don't think I recruited my mom. I, I'm forgetting the people. It's fine. Well, and I recruited the person I was in the situation ship with. And she, uh, the other p pivotal piece to this was I showed her, uh, I showed her the second piece which was the native american with their flag dropped over it which is impressionist and i said and basically the format was if once you look at it that's the first thing that pops out of you and then the second part was after looking at it for a little while what do you think it's trying to portray or what do you think it, you feel uh feel uh feel it's going for mm. and uh the last one is conclusions what they take away from it and then we move on rinse and repeat and she did the first section okay the second section would bother me. She told me, hey, don't write this down. 
And a person that likes to be accurate, she said, well, I don't understand why people like, uh, like to paint these uh, things like Native Americans are so oppressed in our society, you know, and, and, you know, Black Lives Matter and everything like that, this, that, and the other. This person's like almost 30, uh, like 27, 26 at this time. Yeah. And it told, you know, and I, 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 before I put like a millimeter of lead on the paper, she yelled at me cute, cutely saying, don't write that down. And like, okay. And so I already had enough, you know, of her swing around of like bullshit, you yeah. know, you know, if you, if you didn't want to want me, just tell me, stop wasting my time, you know, and I wrote this entire huge, like it was like five to seven pages, you know, I made sure everything was grammatically correct. Yeah. Make sure the time, uh, everything was fine and dandy. I post the study on Facebook, uh, but before that, I gave it to my uncle, uh -huh. I gave it to my aunt, who are the test subjects. They liked the piece, you know. They thought it was a fair representation of them. I gave other people, my, um, I, few of my best friends here in uh, Oklahoma, they loved the piece. The other person who was associated with loved the piece, or at least liked it, uh, liked it. Yeah. Uh, they thought it was fair representation. I gave her the piece. And at the same time, I posted on Facebook. Everybody loved the study, except for one person. Yeah. That 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 person, and she said, "I can't, you know, I can't believe, you know, you call me a racist, this and the other." It's like, all right, you know, you literally said this to me, you know. Yeah. She tries to throw shade at me one time, and she, there is a phrase, uh, is. I, one of the characteristics is uh, I put like uh, pessimistic as her, you know, pessimistic as a uh, as her viewing the second painting, mm -hmm. and she said, "Yeah, you know, uh, I, I forgot what the situation it was, but she said, yeah, let's go do something." Uh, I'm always cheery, and then she looks at me because I'm not pessimistic, you know, and I, I said a phrase from my exact same study, and I said. Well, let's you know, let's not try to be overtly negative here or some bullshit like that. Yeah. It 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 sounds it sounds nicer if I actually knew what the fucking words were. I'm sorry that didn't make that's anybody fine. laugh. No, that's but, fine. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my friend Carrie knew what I was talking about, and uh, you know, I don't need to name drop him, but I don't think anybody's gonna able to find him. But yeah, yeah. Um, he laughs about it, and. Uh, and then after that, I, I, I really just start changing myself. And this was during, uh, through all the pivotal, you know, through four months of time roundabout, it seems short, but day to day, it was not easy, uh, to get myself out of here, uh, and figuring out, wow, that's, it, it, it's bad. And yeah. I, I remember I remember talking to one of my trans friends. Um, I'm gonna use a, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a pseudonym for her. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. You don't that, even that, have to if you don't want like, to. You can just you can just say your trans friend if you want to. It's fine. Yeah, my trans friend, and she she said to me like kind of in a uh, docking uh, phase, but also in a very reassured phase. You know said i was waiting for the time that i knew they were going to sell you out i was waiting for the time this was early 2020 yeah and and i said you know what so and so you're right i should have paid attention to it i sh should have uh seen it and everything yeah. like that but you can't and i don't it's think it's so hard it's yeah, so hard to i don't see. even think it yeah, and uh, I don't even think like the rest of the people that I had contact with knew the full scale of my story, at all. And, you know, there's a lot of things uh, for sake of brevity here uh, that are are integral to the pieces, but I think you know, it's damaging. You know, it yeah. really me messes you up. And um, and I really got out of that. Uh, 
state of mind. And, uh, and so now I'm kind of politically lost. You know, I still have my very brazen, uh, I guess it could say political opinions, but it wasn't, there was no substance to the critique, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so, I mean, and that's the thing around, uh, that's that's common yeah. about a lot of right wing ideologies is there's it's, it's mostly appealing to aesthetics because at the end of the day, they just want you to believe in the lost great time that they're going to bring back because they're looking for loyal subjects for whoever the leader is there. You're not going to get to be the leader. You are supposed to fall in line behind the strong man who will bring you the things that you dream of. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it it's an entirely like different atmosphere I'm in now. And then my mom came in, uh my grandmother, uh, which is an entirely different subplot mm -hmm. within this um which I'm not gonna explain, but uh she, she came up because my grandmother was uh I, I couldn't uh help her that much because I had school and I had work and yeah. I, you know, my mom said, you know what, I'm going to come up there and this and the other. And I, um, and this was last year, February, she was trying to get another teaching job and she came into the right place, wrong time. And next month, everything shut down. And so I had a lot of, um, excuse me, uh, a lot of, um, time yeah. on my hands to think. And yeah. yeah. And I had really no, like, person i can bonk on the head is like hey what are you doing except for my best friend yeah. uh back home and uh that's when i found out about this little niche you know streamer uh, as i thought that has the same format that you do uh called wash and i i was scrolling I'm sorry. through my Who youtube was that? sorry i've never heard of this streamer it, <laughs> Vosh, yeah. Uh, Voosh? He's a very niche. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's always, by the way, it's always good to laugh at, even at yourself sometimes. Uh, and, it uh, is, yes. That's one, oh, that's one of the few things I've learned through my extremely windy path. Uh, yeah. Don't take but, yourself um, too seriously. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. um, and so I I forgot what the first video was, but I was trying to look up uh, like I hated Caitlin ben, uh, Caitlin Bennett. Yeah. I've always hated her. Even when I was a fat uh, fashion, I was like, this is the most obnoxious fucking person I've ever fucking seen. One hundred percent. And yeah, yeah, and you know, and it was until uh, even before, just like two days before I found Bosch, uh, I I found a tweet. Uh, that had Caitlin poop pants uh, from Kent State. I was like, oh shit, uh, man. I'm surprised Twitter or whomever is not tweeting this a lot. And then I went to Bosch's community, and that's a heavy meme there. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> but the first, the first, I think the first uh, video I saw of Bosch was of him debunking uh, and reacting to Caitlin Bennett. And I can't remember if he was calm the entire time. But it was there. There was substance. There was a point, and you can hear the subtext without him lying. I'm not saying he's ever lied. He's actually telling the truth here, you know. And I, you know, continued watching him over and over and over. And um, it, it just kind of came into fruition. Uh, I started getting angry for the right reasons. I was taking. I was practicing mental health of sorts during quarantine uh i met my actual girl a girlfriend of uh nine months mm -hmm. uh who's actually watching the stream right now uh i did tell her that there was some things that she probably did not know uh, other than the fact that i was a trump supporter uh and you know i i i've got to say you know i'm a lot happier now than I've ever been. Yeah. And, you know, so, I mean, it, it, it's after Vosh, it's pretty much been a, a time vacuum of just joining organizations, joining the IWW, joining the communist party, talking to people, uh, 
but the only thing that I still have not found yet is a tight knit group. Yeah. But I, I feel I feel that often, you know, as long as I you know my girlfriend's got my back, and or my mom is there, you know, in terms of just like, hey, what's going on type of deal. Um, you know, I I, I feel there is. I'm not going to stray away. You know, yeah. it, it, I'm going to be a lot happier. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, the wonderful thing of getting out of extremist far right ideologies is that the community you find elsewhere is so different in its nature, and you can feel it. You can really feel it. But the thing is, is that like because of how dominant right-wing ideologies are in America, it's incredibly hard to ever see anything else than these sort of hierarchical, cruel, um, quid pro quo communities that, that demand so much of you in exchange for your belonging. Um, and that's something I can relate with a lot. And I'm very, very happy to, to know that you found your way out of that because it can be it can be incredibly, incredibly, I mean, again, it is isolating and it's isolating by design in many cases. Um, they want you, they don't want you to know that there's anything else out there because that threatens them. That's how cults work. That's how, you know, these Nazi groups work. Um, they use all kinds of tactics of alienation and they take advantage of pre-existing alienation in our society to isolate and manipulate and control you and get you in on board with their message. Even if, you know, even if, uh, and they, they use the fact that you, that humans need togetherness, humans need community. We're social beings. Um, and, uh, they know that whether they acknowledge it or not, they know that. And they use that as a tool to keep people involved in their groups because they can tell you that there's nothing else out there, but there is, um, yeah. And, you know, this is why uh, this is why the like so much for the tolerant left narrative is so is pushed so hard um, by far right groups. It's because they want you to believe that no left wing groups are, are accepting. And while there are certainly some leftist groups that are a little gatekeepy, by and large, the the it, it I've said this many times, it's like on the left or on the right there's a pipeline that goes deeper and deeper into their extremism on the left it's like a pipe that pipes you out into a giant river full of many different paths that you can take because it's not about piping people into one specific ideology or one specific cult it's about being able to liberate yourself and find where you belong and what you actually believe and what you believe will change the world and make the world a better place as opposed to falling in line behind one of a hundred different slightly reskinned hierarchical ideologies and i am very happy that um we're at a state right now where there are communities that are like genuine communities that are built for this age that are built for the internet age that are built to thrive in the internet age that are that are building up because i do think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be able to escape um you know uh who are going to be able to escape these right-wing groups um and find very very satisfying liberating communities outside of them now which might not have been the case um and it's really amazing um that we have a, that we're getting to that point where that might be um possible on a larger scale and uh and i hope that ours can be one of those um and uh yeah but we'll see you know, I mean, I think it's hard and there's a lot of things. And again, like, I think it's important for people, for spaces to not like, uh, to not necessarily approach like step towards the right wingers, but instead to invite the right wingers to step towards them. You know what I mean? To say, hey, you leave that racist shit, you leave that transphobic shit behind, come on. And you can find yourself a place here with a bunch of really diverse people some of whom share a lot of stuff with you you know what i mean um and yeah. and you won't ever have that experience of oh you're half uh you're half uh Lat latino get the fuck out you're not gonna have that you know what i mean and it does re i do think that um you know I, I, I do think that it's going to require some nuance of, of communities learning how to say, no, we're not going to allow, you know, like ours, like ours doesn't allow, we don't allow slurs. We do allow difference of opinion, but you got to follow the basic rules. 
because the place has to be safe for everybody. And as long as it's safe for everybody, then you and you're willing to be, you know, to participate in that, then come on in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, it's it I, your earlier rant, by the way, um, did uh, struck a chord with me because what you said was uh, true, uh, at least in your perspective. But there was another uh, perspective, I think, uh, I, I don't know if I'm just misremembering or not, uh, but it was absolutely true uh, that if a person or persons are gatekeeping or uh, saying a lot of uh, bringing other people down, you know, canceling each other to uh, uh, to the right wingers, that's pushed on a lot. You know, that is heavily pushed on a lot. You know, even when I was right wing, uh, uh, extremist right winger I, I guarantee you, i saw all those canceling you know doesn't yeah. matter if you're a trans pan bi gay whatever white black if you're participating in that you know you know not saying it's implicitly your fault but yeah. i'm saying it's hurting in a very very butterfly effect way well yeah the the, and, the, yeah. the right wingers will leap on that and use it to build propaganda now they'll always have their propaganda but we don't need to help them we don't need to make their job easier is the thing we want to yeah, make their exactly. job hard that's why i think it's important to generally keep these types of convert you know for the most part keep these conversations behind closed doors when it's something unless unless it's like again unless you have the evidence unless you're actually doing something now i will say that like um that like uh, lefties canceling on the left is very different than canceling on the right. The right loves to fucking cancel each other, but they're just super vicious about it. And I've said this many times, they will tear the absolute living shit out of people. Um, you know, they'll just make sure they, there will be a very, very, very intense, very sudden and severe uh, c conflict between factions on the right one will win and one will lose and then the other one will eat up the other one and the people will fall in line and it's clean in like a month on the left people will be sniping at each other for a long time because we don't fucking kill each other you know what i mean most of the time yeah. um with a few exceptions yeah yeah it, um uh, you know it, it, it's so it's uh, so far as in uh the story uh i'll continue on just for a bit more but yeah. um so I, I met my girlfriend, uh, then throughout quarantine, of course, the tragic death of uh, George Floyd happened. Mm -hmm. I protested uh, in my town, uh, but it was relatively milk toast liberal. You know, some of them were, at, you know, there's there are people, the speakers are actually expressing pain. And, you know, gr uh, you know kudos to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but we almost got shot up uh, in that protest. Yeah. Uh, fucking crazy it, uh, it, it was it was so close because there was police officers within the crowd yep. uh I'll, I'll, like there was this guy i'm this guy uh i'm not gonna name drop him based on the fear that he actually lives in the sound and yeah that's fine don't this, don't don't put yourself in danger in the name of uh yeah, of a stream. It, yeah. But he's part of the three percenters. He was like special forces, you know. I don't know if he was Green Beret or uh, what. I was, he yeah. was Army Special Forces. Yeah. And my friend, she nudges me and she says, "Hey, look!" And there's a, a alert news uh, news article and people posting all over Facebook. Hey, uh, there's a guy carrying around SKS or AK-47 uh, oh, going gosh. towards uh, the protests, and three officers are already. Uh, going towards him, uh, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And uh, and so nothing happened, thankfully. Uh, everybody, you know, that that's when I kind of also realized another earth-shattering reality is that I don't know what to do if somebody like that comes and actually does something. Yeah, you know, I don't like, know that anybody has that answer easily. It's really hard. Yeah, well. A lot, I know for at least my perspective, I daydreamed a lot of like being a hero or something like that. Yeah. But like, no, it that reality earth, shat earth shattered even more. Uh, then my girlfriend, uh, I think we barely started dating. Uh, uh, bef like two days, uh, two days or something like I don't know. Let's just say a, a, some, a short amount of time before George Floyd's death, she invited me. He's like, hey, you want to go to protest in uh, Enid, Oklahoma? And I said yeah sure i 
for people that don't know, uh, Oklahoma is an extremely red state. Like there was a story around yes, the place of Enid, at a place of Enid that there was a person that stole somebody's Nazi flag that they were flying, and they got shot for it. But the guy got jailed immediately after the fact uh, because the per- uh, I guess the technicality was uh, because they were retreating automatically after they had it. Uh, they weren't in the right to use the firearm. Uh, I, I don't know what the technicality was, so that's what, how they arrested him. Um, but we went to the Enid protest, and it was a lot more up by me. We, I noticed that cop cars are spying on us mm-hmm. everywhere. And some of them were obvious, like turning into the police station. Then there were some of them that was like, why is that person across the street using binoculars? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And then... Surveillance station. I shit. think... Yep. Yeah. And uh, what happened afterwards uh, was I noticed a white 2019, 2020, whatever, Honda, uh, Honda or Hyundai, uh, four-door sedan. Really nice, uh, kind of out of place for Oklahoma, but you usually see some unicorns here and there. Mm-hmm. This guy had all his windows rolled down. I noticed his two kids in the back seat. One was in a car seat, like a newborn infant kind of car seat. Mm-hmm. And another one that was like probably at most four years old. His wife was also in the car, stopped while going 50 miles per hour instantaneously. Kid jerked his head forward. And uh, the wife kind of, I don't know how, but she kept still. And he flipped the bird and yelled at us. And it's like, you want to get your fucking asses killed and shit like that? No, no, and then said a lot of n words and you know, Jesus stuff Christ. like that. Yeah, and um, st- stepping forward here a bit. Yeah. Uh, I met the guy who brought the AK-47 to that Stillwater uh, area yeah. protest. This guy was unhinged. Yeah. Yeah. I tr- I tried my best to de- deconstruct everything. I just you can't said always. straight up to him. Yeah. I-, I said to him straight up, "Hey, I know you're a three percenter, right?" And he says, "Yeah." And I said, "And I said, let me ask you a very strange question: Are you a white supremacist?" And he looks me dead in the eyes, zombie, like a robot. You know, saying the most. You know, women should belong in the kitchen. They don't belong anywhere but the kitchen at the home. You know. Uh, we need to go back to the 50s uh, at minimum, you know, this and the other. Think about the most vile thing without saying any slurs or any cusses that you can think of. Yeah. And I kind of, I tested something and I kind of moved to my right to see if his eyes would follow me. Did not move. Yeah. Did not move. And, you know, I, that's when the final snap happened. It's like, I, you know, it, no going back. It, there's no going back to that i'm not that looks like hell because that is that is how a lot of these things operate a lot of these um groups don't ever allow people to process their trauma they don't help people mentally they're just about browbeating people into line so that they can get a a crumb of belonging a, a crumb of purpose and that's it and that's it and it's really yeah. sad it is really fucking sad um and uh it it it, uh, again this is the sort of thing that again i've seen this sort of thing in in different contexts but in the same sort of hate-based worldview um there was a a thread i was reading earlier today about a lot of about how a lot of these groups function and a lot of these groups christian like christian extremist groups uh white supremacist extremist groups these groups um genuinely uh they don't believe the world can get better they uh believe that there's like without like a cataclysm at the very least and they are often like again they're accelerationist groups and so they have a fundamentally black-pilled view of the world that's that just makes them over time totally jaded 
they become they they almost train themselves to become sociopathic over time um and it's just because of constantly dipping themselves into hate into the hatred of other people into the dehumanization of other people and eventually they lose they lose a uh, touch of of um of how to connect with anybody except for those people who share their hatred uh, their hateful view viewpoints yeah exactly uh i i you know that's pretty much the end of the story yeah. you know it ended on actually talking to a guy who was open about his beliefs and started off in a very general context but i uh I just wondered if you had any questions for me or chat has any questions for me, if I can possibly answer them, uh, if you so allow it to be. Yeah, uh, chat, if you have questions, um, I need to hit the restroom real quick. I'm very sorry to do that, but, uh, you know, nature calls. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Hello? 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 Can you, yeah, can you, can you hear me or no? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to hit the restroom real quick. If you'd like to just – if you have chat up on the screen, uh, chat, you can shoot some questions over. I'm just going to hit the restroom real quick. Feel free to answer any. Don't feel pressured to answer any of them if chat sends you stupid questions. And I'll be right back to ask you my questions, and, you know, and then we can wrap it up, and I'll do my little – you know spiel and then we have some news to talk about and stuff so uh i'll sure. be right back and you go ahead and answer any of those questions and uh don't say any slurs thanks <laughs> <laughs> gotcha <laughs> okay i'm seeing from chat it's not uh people are asking me how's my day and how am i doing i'm doing pretty good actually um i am pretty much uh today we me and my girlfriend just kind of hung out and everything uh did nothing uh relaxed i gotta go to work in the morning what are your thoughts on, six, uh, on your successful <laughs> <laughs> oh man man oh man i don't know how to answer that benjamin i really don't <laughs> Oh, he's on ban from Twitch? Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Favorite ice cream flavor and why is it mint? Hey, Wendell B, I'm going to tell you right up. It's on my top three, but that's not my favorite. Do you know what two off is? I, I don't know what you're trying to ask me here. They're pan uh, panis. coffee tea or cocoa uh, i'm gonna go straight up to uh, coffee uh, a lot of southerners drink tea and you know I'll, you know honestly you know i have a i state a consistent belief that the confederacy is uh okay 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 pan s you got me Co coffee is the best is the best choice i don't like tea my thoughts and <laughs> I'm going to, Nibiru, I'm going to give you my thoughts about, uh, on that. Stop fetishizing them. A or A K or A H and K. You know what? Panic stasis. That is an interesting question. I actually, I actually dealt with an AR before, um, the, at least the military one, pretty fun. Uh, the H and K and AKs are, uh, H and K is more upscale and, you know, better engineered. Uh, if you really want to get mastered in something, uh, panic stasis, you probably would go with the AK 24 hour mastery if you're really dedicated. Um, but if you want a more complexity, you go with AR and you want to customize everything. If you want to upscale, uh, arm, uh, of a weapon, H, H and K. What are your thoughts on Alden's number? Well, it's not real. I'm back. Hello. Howdy. I've returned. Any good questions, or did chat not do any good questions? Uh, I got I got one thing. Uh, I got one thing that uh, I forgot who it was. I got to scroll up here. Uh, one of us had about an Adam Flores uh, pushed or something like that. Dean and Mama's stream. That was the only. That was pretty funny, but <laughs> but everything else was pretty clean cut. Yeah. So uh, let's let's. I guess here's a good question. Uh, 
uh, how how have you personally uh, felt about uh, the 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 sort of ability to see other communities online and and have you found promise in that uh i know that you've found a lot of personal liberation from leaving the right but how do you feel about um how do you feel about what you see online is it uh is is there do you feel that like what i say about how the left is a lot more of an opening that you get sort of pumped out into like an ocean and sometimes it could be a little disorienting but there's lots and lots of options for you do you feel like that's the, the case or is that a different experience to what you've experienced I okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk in two different uh, realities here sure. in terms of online and personal. Uh -huh. uh, in terms of like uh, the everybody knows that there's a difference between the online left and the real left. But my experiences of the real left, uh, the IWW accepts a lot of people um, who are workers, and we yeah. get a lot of people uh, a lot of different ideas on how to do things, and um, and how to organize and all that kind of cool stuff. And we you know I've had one-on-one -on -one talks with uh, the head guy here in my, in my branch, uh, just on random bullshit. Uh, we talked about ContraPoints at one time because he knows who that is, but some, you know, uh, how, how to properly critique something. Uh, I've also had talks uh, with people, real life communists that, you know, kind of worried me. I'm like, uh, you know, it, like you don't, you know, like, uh, okay, uh, I'll let, I'll let you know, arguing for a, a reasonable, reasonably, but I'm not, uh, buying it, if yeah. that makes sense at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and online left, when I, I, I have a Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. uh, concurrently like 15 followers. Uh, Imps code, which is a always huge... remember it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mostly, I mostly just like and retweet stuff, but I never, uh, when I, whenever I see like the comments of an extremely divisive thing, I always ask myself, is this going to be grammatically correct in the english language and i know that's a weird 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 thing to uh juxtapose on twitter because nobody's grammatically correct uh on on twitter but if they're speaking not, not not like a code but like random things that i don't even know about mm -hmm. i'm like is this worth engaging yeah is is this worth my time because so i gotta pay rent yeah, I got to pay my car note. I, I got to do a million other things. I'm not going to be swallowed up by whatever, you know, uh, the anarcho-communist party for liberation and freedom of the USA has to say about X, Y, and Z. Yeah, you know? the, the, the minute uh, factionalism is, is usually not worth everyone's time. And I'm glad you found yeah. that too because um, I think that one of the things that's uh, – one of the things that's like uh, – that I, I personally, you know, and you've heard me say this, I know you've, you've seen a lot of my streams, but I know you've heard me say this, that I don't care about people's individual uh, titles, whether they're an anarcho X or a, a authoritarian Y or whatever. I care about what people advocate for, and I care about their actions. Um, and uh, and I, I, you know, describe myself as a lefty with some anarchist phil philosophical leanings, and that's good enough for me. And the thing is, it feels like um, it's it's pretty easy to do that. It's pretty easy to take that role. And there are a few groups that are super, sec you know, sectarian and whatever. Um, but for the most part, um, I've found that it's much easier to uh it's much easier to just be yourself ideologically not not just to mention like with regard to sexual orientation or or gender expression but even just ideologically in the general leftospheres than it is on the right where on the right it's like oh you're not a christian oh get the fuck out oh you're not white oh get the fuck out oh you're not straight get the fuck out you know what i mean that's like all over yeah, the place yeah. on the on the right and it's it's written in divine code sometimes you know like it, it'll, like something as little as like oh you're born gay fuck you yeah it, it's also it's also kind of indicative like I, I'll, I'll go back to the story here for a second. Uh, sure. I, I used to watch uh, Jason Unruh when I was extremely young mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, when he was, quote-unquote, gaining prominence, yeah. quote-unquote. He was an uh, anarchist like he at never that time, right? I, I, he, was like, he was like simping for Kim Jong-un slash Oh, Il, okay, uh, so that was after he went tanky, okay. Yes, yes, and... Yeah. Um, and 
I, I see I see the same resemblance of people who uh, go tanky or close to it, and they say, "Well, I'm a leftist and this and the other," and uh, this has got to be the way. I'm like, okay, I, let's talk about why you would defend somebody like Ceausescu in Romania. Let's mm -hmm. talk. Why are you not on your? Let's say why you simp so hard for him, yeah. but why? What? What is your internal processes to do that? Because Shoshesky was not a light person. He yeah. uh, he he wasn't lackadaisical. Right. He was the most authoritarian person right next to Stalin slash the Soviet Union. Right. And so it, I'm just I know I'm throwing something out there, but uh, it, there there is you know a lot of sectarianism and there's a lot of people who are even anarchists that I kind of uh, see who are very not confused problematic and you know in a strange way because they well that's go the, that's the specifically same. why i i i caution people against dogmatism and and hyper traditionalism because i think that, exactly. that these those characteristics are the right-wing characteristics that build these hierarchical structures which is part of the reason why i don't consider like hardline authoritarians actual leftists i don't find yeah. that if you are if you're able to uh to buy in into this sort of cultish dogma and this cultish uh, uh uh worship of things that once were it's the same fil it's the same psychology that builds up the right wing ideologies and that's why i really caution people against those traits as opposed to necessarily a particular label or whatever because i think you can label it whatever you want again aesthetics are cheap it's easy to paper anything in whatever aesthetic you want but what matters is what you're actually advocating for and what you're actually doing. The expensive part is the brain power and the legwork behind it. Yep. Yep. So, Agreed. Yep. Uh, yep. So what are, uh, what else uh, do you got for me in terms of questions? Um, I mean, honestly, it was really, you were super thorough in your story. And as far as questions go, I mean, I guess the one obvious question that I would want to ask is what, in your opinion, can the left do better to increase the chance of us getting to through to people like yourself before you get pulled down the pipeline. What can we do better if you know? And if you don't, that's fine. I don't expect everyone to have that answer. That's a really complicated question. But if you have anything for us, I would love to know and I would love to take a note on it because this is something that I am hoping that we can improve on and that maybe I myself can help make the push in the right direction. Let, let me think about this for a second. Sure. Because I, I may have your answer here for a second. Um, one word mm -hmm. um outreach outreach okay uh, uh and i want to expand this uh expand on this uh a little bit further um there's a lot of people that i notice especially around covid times because you can't willy-nilly with, with a bunch of people i yeah. actually had to cut off friends who are like super bad that people are going to concerts and everything but they're going to bars themselves whatever but that's besides the point i think outreach personally for ourselves is the best way to do it mm -hmm. and um to actually be genuine um to be genuine and our ability to care for one another there is um a lot of things uh i'm sorry i'm getting a little bit teary eyed um it's okay i can understand that there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of things where i would have appreciated somebody to stop and say hey man you okay yeah and uh and you don't even have to be politically active or politically motivated to do it yeah. because you could just say hey man you okay and that is all the things that you know a lot of people need yeah and if you need to push on it push on it because there is no consequence other than just simply you know saying all right man but or you know my dude at yeah um i know you don't want to talk about it but here's my phone number here here's where i'm at here's or, my discord this is my workplace or my discord or yeah. whatever form of communication they feel comfortable giving out they say if you want to talk to uh, about something i'm always here it, you know this can go from people you know for 10 years and fucking hate to people you barely met yeah 
And compassion goes a long way. A compassion and empathy goes a long way. Yeah, it it, you know, in, in, in outreach, this doesn't just always uh, apply just to verbally communicating with somebody with compassion. Mm -hmm. Also making sure that their situation at home is absolutely okay. You don't have to do the Jeff Bezos philanthropy. You know what's the best thing for a child when they have a rough home and they have a best friend that has a full family? The parents that say, hey, we got an extra play for you. That goes a long way. Yep, it does. A long way. Oh, true. That kid, yep. that, that kid will think of that household as their second family. And that's psychologically been proven over and over and over again. Yep. And I've talked and, about that many I think, times. That that and, the, uh, you know, the the mutual the family aid. you choose. Yeah, it's the family you choose, and I I, I know you under, under, uh, understand this uh, uh, sentiment that the family that you choose is the ones are going to take care of you, and it's not always blood. It's not always blood. Yeah, that's going to take care of you. A lot of time, it's not. And and so, just just make sure people are okay. This is a tough time. You know, we may be scrolling and going through our private screens every single morning, have to get out of the shower, do it again, go to work, do it again on the computer, and seeing all these stories that get us so upset and so blind. Mm -hmm. But we forget the humanity of the guy in the next cubicle and yeah. say, hey, man, you want, you want to go out for a beer? I, I noticed you're kind of stressed. And don't or, be afraid to tell your friends name? that you love them. Seriously. Yeah, it sounds exactly. cringe, but I, I, life is short these days. I tell, I tell my best friend who's uh, uh, you know, really big into music. Me and him just say, "I love you, man," because mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna get into a car accident and die. You know, I tell my girlfriend all the time. I call, I tell her, "I love you," you know, L U B, you know, yeah. or loves in plural. And you know, I don't know if I'm gonna go into work and get my arm cut off and bleed to death. Yeah. You know, it. it, it I mean, in the time of a, we live in a time of a plague. You gotta show people that you care, and it can go a long way. Uh, yeah, and, and and yeah, it's 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 crazy out there, and you you just need to do a lot of outreach, a lot of one on one, make sure your fellow man's all right, yeah. even if you disagree with him. Yeah, and it you know it's funny because I I've said this a couple times on the stream when talking about mutual aid because um. I think sometimes people get this idea that like mutual aid is always done through like a, a food drive or whatever, but it's really not like just being plugged into your friends and your family members. And if you happen to have 20 bucks to spare and they need a sandwich, they need something to eat, fucking consider giving it that way. Cause you might let them live another day and th and that will do so much to inoculate people from falling into these like horrific, um, these really isolating, manipulative groups that prey on people being alienated and alone. Yeah. So. Yeah. It. It's. It's. That. That. That's the one word I got for you is outreach. Yeah. Yeah. Any way you can. Any way how. Yeah. Well. Well, Adam, that about wraps up the main questions I had for you. I think you did a really, really great job telling your story. Uh, thank you for coming on and telling the story to nearly 300 people. Um, and I'm very, yes. very happy to uh, hear that uh, – I'm very happy to hear that you're doing better now and that you have started to build a um, sense of belonging and a community that is um, independent of these groups that are – you know, trying to rope you into them, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, it's, it can be freeing. And I'm very happy to hear that. And um, Adam, thank you so much for, for coming on um, and for being a part of our internet community um, because uh, we're happy to have you here. And we're really, really happy that you were willing to share your story. Um, you know, that you were willing to share your story with us, I should say. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. And I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, if I may, uh, for one quick uh, second, do. if you guys want to uh, want to uh, follow uh, my not Snapchat, uh, my what was it called? Twitter. Sorry. My Twitter account. Uh, I'll go ahead and post it right here. It's average Spartacus. I misspelled Spartacus. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, so there you go. That's all I got. So thank you so much, um, even Mama. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, let. 
you know, this is like the biggest crowd, uh, at least in terms of numbers I've spoken to. I'm a public speaker. Uh, I like speaking. I like speaking in front of an audience, including if it's a dialogue and everything like that. Uh, getting this off my chest, you know, especially with my girlfriend to be the witness of that, uh, I, I, I sincerely thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to not only be able to, you know, give you the opportunity to talk about this stuff, but also to give you the opportunity to, to speak these words to other people in the audience who might be having similar struggles or who may have been through it themselves. Because sometimes even after you get through it, it can feel, it can be hard to adjust to trying to find community. And it can be hard. It can, we, I mean, we had a whole talk about this earlier. Half my rant was about that, about how hard it can be to find community. And hopefully, hopefully that's changing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I got to go to sleep. I got a 12 hour work day tomorrow and then back to back three days after that. So I hope you have a great rest of your stream. I hope chat has a great night and I'll see you guys later. Adam, thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful night and a good day tomorrow. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night. Good night. What a great conversation.